another uh, issue with derivative causality, why we don't uh, accept it uh, in physical systems, why it's not acceptable in physical systems is because say, for example, you consider um, and the inertia element in derivative causality, okay, as over here, I element with the stroke away from it. In that case, uh, when you take the derivative of this, okay, you are saying limit time derivative of the momentum. Now you see the time derivative, it, it corresponds to momentum at the time t plus delta t minus t. And what is t? t is the present time. That means you need to look into the future. Okay, so uh, this derivative operation does not take past history of cause into consideration. Okay, it it rather looks into the future and that's that's the problem actually. So that is why in nature, uh, which fo follows a very uh, reasonable and logical uh, approach, um, this form of causality is not natural for the I element. Now let us look at, let us revisit the spring. So for the spring, uh, we have taken the ends A and B, and I'm taking it with this, uh, reference to uh, a fixed reference. Let's say the location of the end A is XA, and the position of uh, end B is XP. And let's say that L naught is the undeformed length of the spring. When no force is applied by the spring, when it is uh, lying in its undeformed condition. This, this is the basic length. So you will find that you can write it as XB equal to XA plus L naught. Okay, this is how you can relate these uh, displacements, uh, these positions at the ends of the spring. Now, suppose if the spring is deformed, okay, after uh, at a time t, now it is occupying the position xa of t and uh, xb of t. Now, what has happened here? In addition to the earlier undeformed length, there is a deformation q. So, you've got additional q over here. OK, so now the relationship is XB is equal to XA plus L naught plus Q. Now, if you take the derivative of this, you take the derivative of this relationship, what do you get? You get XB dot rate of change of, that means the velocity of B is equal to XA dot plus you see, L naught is a constant, its derivative is zero plus Q dot. And that is why we wrote Q dot is equal to XB dot minus XA dot. You see, we took relative velocity across the ends of the spring. Okay. That corresponds to the rate of change of deformation of the spring. That is the reason why we used Q dot. Now, if it is a linear spring, so, so uh, if it is a linear spring, you have a linear relationship between Q and the output effort. If it is a nonlinear spring, depending upon its characteristic, you have <coughs> a nonlinear relationship. Okay, in that case, you can say it is effort that is output is a function of the generalized displacement or deformation of the spring Q. Okay, so this is just for spring and for uh, you can also uh, do it for capacitances. You can have linear as well as nonlinear capacitances. Okay, in sensors, uh, in capacitive sensors, we do have such kind of situations. <sighs> so you can uh, see over here that in integral causality, uh, this is what happens. We have already discussed this. Uh, this is what happens in derivative causality. Uh, past history of cause is not taken into consideration, and so it's not a natural form of causality. Now let us come to the R element, the causality of the R element. 
the r element can take causality in two ways okay uh, in its simple form it can take causality in two ways uh we have taken the r element of course now it is an electrical resistance it's not a spring the symbol appears to be the same so you have the resistance a and b are the ends of the resistance a and so you have va and vb okay and uh, you can write the relationship between the voltage across the ends of this the potential difference across the ends and between the resistance so you can write uh, the output that means what is the current that is produced as current is equal to va minus vb upon r this is one way in which you can write the ohm's law so it, it implies that it's the effort across the ends of the resistance okay uh, divided by man uh, it is divided by uh, r so effort divided by r and that is function of effort okay it's a linear relationship in this case so <clears throat> so uh, the output or the flow current is uh, effort divided by r effort is actually the potential difference across the ends of this resistance okay and it's a linear relationship you see between flow and effort okay uh, this is one way in which we can write causality so in that case we have r the output that is flow okay for this r uh, input is effort which is Uh, the potential difference across the spring, uh, across the resistance, uh, and the output is a function of this potential difference. Okay, all that you have to do is just divide it by R. This form of causality, where input, uh, you see, the effort receiving end is over here because it is receiving effort, so the causal stroke comes here. This is one way of representing the causality for the R element. Where you can invert, where you can perform this inversion. Okay. The next is uh, you can also look at this R element in another way. Uh, you can also look at it as output is V A minus V B. If you provide an input of current. Instead of potential difference, you apply an input of current. That means you force a current through it. it will produce a potential difference so it's a function of the flow in that case you have the r element input is flow the current which you are forcing through it and the output is a function of that okay so there are these two different ways in which the causal stroke for r can be placed okay so you can see what is the input the input in this case is effort okay it's a potential difference that you are applying across so when the input is effort that is voltage difference the resistance will produce a current which is a function of that effort difference of voltage difference depending upon r it's its property and in case you instead of uh, providing a potential difference if you provide a current through this r if you force a current through this r 
the r will determine what should be the electrical potential across its ends so the output will be effort which is va minus vb which is the potential difference across the ends of the r element okay uh, if it is a linear resistance it will be just r of uh, r into i if it is non linear it will be a function of the flow function of the input okay so this is how you can have the causality for the r element